In this video, I wanna share with you seven reasons why you should not do the Dave Ramsey baby steps. Now, I have a unique perspective because I have been following his plan for the past three years, not to a T. For most people, we consider I'm on baby step seven or like paying off your house, building wealth and giving. So I think I have a, a unique perspective from the whole end of the spectrum because I've done baby step one all the way to baby step seven. If you are you know, considering maybe you know, making a change of your finances this year, and you're considering whether, you know, should I follow Dave Ramsey baby steps? Should I not? You know, is this for me? I hope this video clears um, some of those thoughts up for you, but I'm only gonna be talking about why, you know, this may not be a good fit for you. So let's dive right in first off and talk about what are the baby steps. First off, baby step one is save $1,000 as fast as you can. Number two is pay off all your debt using the snowball method. Three is uh, build an emergency fund, three to six months of expenses. Four is start saving or investing 15% of your income. And five is start saving for your kid's college. Six is pay off your house. And seven is start building wealth and giving. Now, the very first reason I'd say this plan is not for you is if you are not willing to make a change. Now, what I mean by that is like a drastic change in how you manage your money and just your mindset around money. Um, because it's gonna require this plan especially if you follow it to a T, it's gonna require a huge amount of sacrifice. And so I feel like you're probably not ready for this plan if you're not sick and tired, if you are just not, if you just don't hate where you're at in life, or you're just really confused as far as like how to manage your money and you're, you're just done, okay? I mean, it's funny, Dave Ramsey says, you're gonna to have to start eating rice and beans. And you know what, the joke's on him because I stink and love rice and beans being Hispanic. So that was never a problem for me, but it might be a problem for others. Um, and so it, it gets hard. It gets hard at times um, when, you, when you can't spend anything, especially used to a lifestyle of just spending on whatever you want, whenever you want. I was never really that way, where I never really struggled with like, spending uh, lavishly on whatever I wanted. So I never really struggled with that, but I know there's a lot of people that do. And so if you're not at a point where, you know, you want to truly, truly make a change, then I don't think this plan is gonna work for you because it just requires too much work and too much sacrifice. So the second reason why the baby steps may not be for you is if you were just comfortable with having some cash in the bank, even though you in debt. Now, I struggled with this one because before Grace and I decided to pay off debt, you know, we did have a little bit of savings and, you know, it felt good. It just felt good. I don't know, I felt like a security with that. But the trick was I was lying to myself. You know what I mean? I was lying to myself. I didn't, on paper, I was broke because we had student loans, car payments, all this other stuff, credit cards, and um, I was broke, even though I had some money in the bank and it made me feel comfortable having it. So I don't think this, the baby steps are gonna work for you if you just don't go all in as far as, right, you save that $1,000. Now, I know, you know, I mean, what you're thinking, you know, it's hard these days, right? Especially with how expensive things are, with inflation and things like that. But I think, I guess how, I think you have to tweak it to what's best for you. I think it's the principle behind that save $1,000 is like, it's just save something and then just go gazelle intense, just go super intense and you have to just go all in to pay off the debt. Cause if you drag it out, if you drag it out, you're just, you're not gonna fulfill it. You're just not gonna do it, you know, because it's hard, it's hard. And so if you follow the principle and maybe, maybe a different way to look at it is if instead of saving a thousand, maybe just save one month of expenses or live with your parents for a certain amount of time while you're throwing, you're paying off all your debt. Or, you know, if you're married, kind of just find security in knowing that, okay, what are the, what are the, what is the likelihood of you both losing your jobs? And so I think that's what kind of gave us peace about it with Grace and I are like, okay, well, we both have full-time jobs. What is the likelihood of us both losing our jobs at the same time? And so I think those are, those are three different options um, to consider. Um, and some things that we did too. The third reason why the baby steps may not be a good fit for you is if you are just a straight up math whiz. Like, you know what I mean? The baby steps are not necessarily the most, or at least baby step two when you're paying off your debt is not necessarily the most efficient way to pay off your debt. What I mean is with the snowball method that Dave Ramsey recommends, he's like, you got to pay off just the smallest debt, not the highest interest debt, but just the smallest amount that you have 
right? So for us, we had, I think the smallest debt was, was our car and then our, our student loans was the, was the next, no, 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 it was some credit cards that my wife had when we got married that I didn't know about. Um, <laughs> we had to work through that. We got through that, thank God. But um, some credit cards and then my car and then student loans. Now, it's all behavioral when it comes to this method. But if you're a math whiz and you just know like, you know, it just makes more sense to pay off the high interest debt. And it does, it does make more sense. But the way human nature works and how our behaviors around money and psychology, it doesn't work. And so that's what Dave Ramsey is trying to prove. But if you are just that, you're an outlier and you know like, oh, this doesn't make any sense and you have a crazy amount of discipline, you know, then this, this baby test may not make sense to you. It may not work for you. So I wouldn't, yeah, just do it your way then. The fourth reason why the Dave Ramsey baby steps may not be for you is if you want to hang on to your credit score. Dave Ramsey does not care about your credit score. He says it's a, uh, it's, it's a debt. I love debt score. That's what he says. And you know, I, I, I struggled with this one here. And uh, well, I didn't really struggle. I just didn't do it. <laughs> what, uh, because with your credit score, it's just, especially when it comes to credit cards and things like that, he's completely against credit cards. So if you have a strong uh, you know, case and you, you, are, you wanna build your credit score, you, wanna, you want to leverage credit cards and use them smart, then this plan may not be for you. But I, I kind of worked around it just because with the credit score, I know how important it is these days, you know, just even get an apartment sometimes with the job, insurance. If you don't have a good credit score, things are just more expensive for you, uh, especially if you're looking to get a loan on a house and just go the traditional way. I know Dave Ramsey offers, there's other options out there, but in, in my opinion, it's a little harder because he says you can go to through manual underwriting, um, but you do have to show like proof of income for the, for the past two years. And you know they look in other areas if, if you've been responsible with your money. Now, that might be hard if you're self-employed, you know what I mean, if your income varies. And so I think your credit score really, really matters in today's society if you, you know, are looking to leverage money and buy a home and do different things like that. Um, especially, yeah, if you don't live, <laughs> especially if you don't live in the Midwest and you're trying to buy a home out there, um, in the East Coast, West Coast, it's really tough. And that's one of the reasons why we moved to the, to the Midwest, you know, it's, we can have a, uh, a chance at a better life out here. Cause things are definitely a lot cheaper, a lot cheaper. I'm talking like five times cheaper when it comes to housing at least. So yeah, my, my thoughts on credit cards and, and credit scores. Um, yeah, that was, that was a little tough. I guess, but I, I just, I worked around it. And so, but if you are really, you know, gun ho about credit cards and credit scores, you may not want to follow Dave Ramsey's plan. The fifth reason why you may not want to follow the plan is if you want to invest in other ways besides your traditional retirement account. Cause he does say in baby step, uh, five, I believe four, no, it's four invest in, um, 50% into retirement accounts. Now, I did do that. I did invest um, until I realized there's other places I could invest. Now, I don't think a lot of people know that there's other places to invest. I mean, I mean, because we're just so, we're told, you know, retirement accounts, Roth IRA, IRA, 401k, that's just kind of what, what's sold and pushed. And, um, but if you're an outlier and you, you know, you want to invest in other ways that you are, you know, more competent in or understand, um, then this plan may not be for you either um, because you want to invest in other ways. Now, the sixth reason why this plan may not be for you is if you don't want to pay for your kid's college. Because in Dave Ramsey's, I think it's the fifth step, he says save for your kid's college. Now, I was, I actually, I'm, I didn't do this one. Um, I'm not planning to do this one. Uh, there's a couple of reasons. First reason is, it's not that I don't value college. I value education. I think that's the main thing for me. I don't think college is necessarily, the, it's not the only path for education. I don't know if it's necessarily the best path. Um, in my opinion, I feel like finding the right mentor or learning one specific skill, uh, you know, from a course these days from someone who's actually done it. I don't know about you. When I went to college, 
I listen to all these people that didn't have any experience. They experience in teaching, but they don't experience in actually doing anything as far as like what they taught. And um, not only was college kind of boring because they didn't make it interesting because they they're, they're talking about other people, but it wasn't about you know what they did. And I, I don't know, I just didn't find very much credibility um, in the teachers that you know taught me. And I'm not saying all of them, and I'm not saying they're bad at all. It's just, and how I want to teach my kid, I actually want to show them things and I do value education, but I don't feel like college is, is the best way or the only way to get an education. And so I might save for my son to, you know, take a course here, take a course there, but I want him to figure it out. I want him to learn how to figure out and get creative with figuring out the resources that he needs in order to figure out a specific task and build that confidence along the way. I feel like, cause that's how I've learned, you know, that's literally just researching and spending hours learning on my own. I feel like if you're really interested in something, you're going to learn it and you're going to find a way to learn it. And I feel like it's easier now to gain access than ever before to learn something that you want to learn, whether it's learning Google ads or Facebook ads or learning how to you know, use your camera. You don't need to necessarily need to go to college for that. There's YouTube and there's other courses from people that have done it before. And so I feel like things are changing. The atmosphere and how you, I guess, um, intake information and learn things is changing. And I want to teach my son to be resourceful on his own. Um, so that's why my wife and I are both agree on this, where we're not going to be paying for his college. Uh, we might help him, but we're not paying for the whole whole ordeal or anything like that. Um, but that's just that's just my two cents on that. And we didn't we kind of skipped over that um, over that that step. But also, I feel like if you kind of over skip that step, you can actually get to building wealth faster and then faster that you're building wealth, then you have more money to actually invest into your kids. So that's another that's kind of how I thought, too. It's like, OK, well, let's just skip that. Let's just move forward um, and start building income in different ways. That way we can provide a better life for our son if we choose to do um, do so as far as like, you know, paying for education and helping them in other ways like that. Yeah, so I think I've said enough on that, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Now, the last reason why this plan may not be for you is if you are in a place in life where you feel like you kind of have a good handle on your money, but you're looking to grow it and invest it. Okay, Dave Ramsey's all about getting out of debt, managing your money. But if you're looking to invest and grow it, I would say look elsewhere. Um, this plan is not for you. So those are my seven reasons why this may not be a right fit for you. Now, if you're watching and you've kind of gone through the plan already, why don't you leave a comment down below of why this may not work for someone else as well. Um, like I said, I just want this video to be a, a resource to help you know, other people whether they're considering making a change and a, they're considering this plan. But in another video I might, I might do and talk about why you should do the plan. But for now, that's all I have guys. Hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video.